Hi everyone, my name is Terry. Welcome to Friday Fact Day, where I get to tell you about my work in fitness, feminism, and philosophy. And today we're talking about Agnotology Part 2. So I want to start by saying thanks to everybody who left comments and sent me messages with questions and everything in the last Agnotology video. I'm really excited that you're curious and excited about this too. Agnotology is a brand new branch of philosophy. And by brand new, I mean it's actually 25 years old. But when you consider how long certain branches of philosophy have been around, that's actually pretty new. Agnotology was created in 1995 by Dr. Robert Proctor, who is a science historian at Stanford University in California. And he collaborated with Dr. Londa Schiebinger, also a science historian at Stanford. And they eventually created this, uh, Agnotology, the Making and Unmaking of the Ignorance. And you can see this is, this is my own working copy. Uh, well loved and well tape flagged. I do love a tape flag. This is a collection of some of their work on agnotology, some of their earlier essays in science history, and some projects and essays from other scholars in all kinds of disciplines. There's uh, science, history, education, business studies, gender studies. I mean, it's all in there. So in order to give us a foundation to work with and, and something to sort of put all this ignorance into context with, Dr. Proctor and Dr. Schiebinger created three categories of agnotology. The first is native state, the second is lost realm, and the third is strategic ploy, which is the one I do most of my work in. Native state is where most of us are most of the time on most subjects. Nobody knows everything about every subject. Nobody even knows every subject that exists. So we're all somewhat in native state at all times. Lost realm is really about whose knowledge has gotten kept and whose knowledge has been suppressed over the years historically. So things that might have been classified as folk tales or tribal knowledge or uncivilized bits of folkery from the past, or you may be familiar with the term old wives tales. Those things are all historically, they're basically whatever was not written down because, you know, rich white hetero men thought it wasn't important. The third category of agnotology is called strategic ploy. And that's where the powers that be are controlling, or I think the term gatekeeping is really well applied here. They're gatekeeping what knowledge is accessible, what knowledge isn't, and who gets to have access. It's also what we call snake oil sales. So when people send out fake information, but pretend it's real. They pretend it's real science, it's real news, that kind of stuff. All of this comes under the strate strategic ploy category. And that's the one that I use a lot. I use a bit of Lost Realm as well, but I mostly use strategic ploy. And I'm looking at, of course, the intersections of gender myths and fitness myths and where they exacerbate each other. So you'll remember a few weeks ago I did a video on Bicycle Face, which is a great historical example. For a more current example, think about um, Olympic coverage. Think of how women and men are discussed in media coverage during the Olympics and any sport actually. I mean, I can't think of an example of a male athlete being asked to twirl around and show off his outfit, right? I mean, that's not an Olympic one, but that's something that happened to a Canadian athlete a couple of years ago during a live interview on television. When does anybody ever ask a male athlete to do that? It's about looking at, again, the gatekeeping, right? When and where and why and how women or any non-masculine person has been kept away from physical activity of any kind, sport, fitness, exercising in the gym, doing outdoor activities, you name it. Um, all of that sort of stuff is what we're looking at. So really, the whole point behind agnotology is to peek into the closets and look at the skeletons, right? It's about, it's about lifting up the rug and seeing what dirt's been swept under there over decades or centuries or millennia, whatever. It can be any length of time. And looking at how the gatekeeping of who gets access to knowledge and whose knowledge gets considered to be knowledge is all done and how it's perpetuated. So these things are perpetuated by educational practices, educational resources like textbooks, um, 
media, of course, is the big one in recent decades because we've got so much of it now. Um, things like our moral education and where that comes from. Uh, medical history in the example of bicycle face. Any kind of history in many, many examples of other topics or categories. All of that, all of that gatekeeping, all of that suppression of knowledge from one area and elevation of knowledge from another. That's all what agnotology is really about. It's about looking at who benefits and looking at who get, gets hurt from not having access to that knowledge. So keep asking questions, keep looking under rugs for the dirt, <laughs> keep fighting the patriarchy, and I'm going to see you next Friday. Bye.